Well, howdy, partners. Outlaws of Thunder Junction is almost here, and with it, the breaking news. That's what it's called. The breaking news bonus sheet. It's kind of like the Mystic Archives in Strixhaven, if you remember that. But boy, I mean, it's good. not since then have we had so many cards for Timeless. I've been brewing up a storm. I got three decks I'm pumped to play. Day one of OTJ, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. I'm going to share them with you now. Let's go. Okay, welcome to the Attic Manadad here. This is the channel where we explore what's good in Magic, mostly on Arena. We can't explore on Arena yet. These cards are not yet available as I record. So we're just going to look at them on Moxfield. I'll have the Moxfield link if you want to go duplicate the deck, make changes, make it better. Be sure to come back and leave a comment if you do. But let's take a look right off the bat. Um, no, wait. We're, oh, okay, well, right off the bat, Mana Drain. All right. There, I got a, another deck. There's only two of Mandarins in this deck. This is, by the way, a Timeless Mill. Okay, is Mill actually going to be valid in Timeless? We're going to be testing it out here on the channel. Um, Mandarin legal. You can play four of. I've got a deck that takes advantage of that. That 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 is not this deck. Okay, stick around for the deck that makes best use of Mandarin. This is the deck to make best use of Archive Trap. If an opponent searches their library this turn, you can pay zero rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Target opponent mills 13 cards. Well, everybody's playing fetch lands. They're not going to stop playing fetch lands just because Archive Trap is out here. So, zero mana, instant. They mill 13 cards. That's going to be pretty pretty fun. We can also Hit them for 10, mill them for 10 with Glimpse the Unthinkable. There's one cheeky little Bruvac the Grandiloquent, which is going to double up our mill uh, if we happen to get it out. And uh, we'll be very nice with Archive Trap. But really, we want to draw as many cards as we can, stuff like Lorien Reveal, Treasure Cruise. Fill up our hand with the Archive Traps. And then four of Surgical Extraption. Once we've hit them with one of these mill cards, let's extract their win cons out of the graveyard, right? Hit. Omnitel, get those omniscience out of there, get the show and tells out of there with surgical extraction. It's a free spell, so we don't even have to pay the black man, although this deck can do it. And um, what this does is uh, choose target card in a graveyard other than a basic land, search its owner's graveyard hand in the library for any number of cards with the same name, exile that player shuffles. Pretty simple. This deck can run Luris. We've got Founding of the Third Path, which is going to be very nice to play Glimpse of the Unthinkable, uh, essentially for free with the first chapter. We can play that, play a glimpse from our hand, get that mill train going. Once we've got some stuff in the graveyard, Drown in the Lock comes online. It's a counterspell. It's removal. That's very nice. Until then, we've got Fatal Push. One of Merfolk's Secret Creep Keeper. I was debating whether to split secret keeper and ruin crab but here's my thinking with the fetch lands here and we've got four polluted deltas and four flooded strands ruin crab is just another nice mill very efficient of course the more opponents draw which they do a lot in this format the easier our task becomes mesmeric orb is legal in this format i'm not sure it's a four of i have to test it out a lot of the mill deck uh lists that i was looking at had four of Mesmeric Orb, so I'm going with four of for right now. This is what we're going with day one. Uh, of course, because we have a lot of ways to fetch islands, we can do Mystic Sanctuary, we can get back our Glimpse, we can get back our Archive Trap, put it back on top of our library and hit people with it again. <laughs> or, you know, if you really want to demoralize them, get back the uh, Mana Drain. <laughs> and um, two Spell Pierces, again, to fight the show and tell Menace. Um, that's basically the deck. Luris can loop the Ruin Crabs, the Secret Keeper. It can uh, replay the Founding of the Third Path, which has a mill mode and uh, has a copy, instant, or sorcery uh, in the graveyard mode. So pretty straightforward. It's mill, but it's in Timeless. I'm pretty pumped for it. I hope you are too. Let's go see what other decks I've cooked up today. Hold up, partner. It's me, Tinerbones. Yes. That's my real name, not just my wife's nickname for me. As a skeleton thief, I'm always looking for a steal. Did you know that memberships on this channel cost the absolute minimum that YouTube allows? And you get access to videos early, which means you can steal deck ideas from the car sharps before their stagecoach even gets to town. Yeehaw! Some of the car sharps around these parts are so sharp, they're sharper than my 
adorable little baby teeth. Oh, so tiny. The really sharp ones are using the affiliate link in the description to buy the cards they like at suspiciously low prices. That video description has all kinds of loot. Too bad I never learned to read. Kids, don't grow up to be like me, tiny bones, living a life of crime and having no eyeballs. If only I growed up with a man a dad who always had a wrap up at the end of the video with surprising and useful information. Then they would call me Smarter Bones. Don't be like me, Tiny Bones. Be like a smarter, less tiny me with eyeballs and a brain and such and a plan for what to do with considerably more jewelry than my tiny little arms can lift. Oh, I'm late to rob a graveyard. Adios. Okay, so this is a spicy one on Reddit. <laughs> there was somebody brewing around one with nothing, which is uh, just got added to the format. Hopefully you were there on April Fool's Day and got your free four copies. Um, they had a whole thing built around it with like Shadow of the Grave and Asylum Visitor and Alms of the Vein and Fiery Temper, like these madness cards. Um, and the more I looked at that deck and tried to fiddle around with it, the more I was like, you know what? That's not, I'm not interested in that part of the deck. The part of the deck I was interested in is Arclight Phoenix, Bloodgast, Prized Amalgam. We know this is a good shell with the Bloodgast and the Prized Amalgam. Making it Grixis with Arclight Phoenix and uh, some gambles and some faithless looting seem really interesting to me. So basically taking that um, Demir Dredge shell that has been decently successful in Timeless before, adding to it, um, we got the Surgical Extractions. So we can surgically extract uh, our opponent's win cons after, you know, we thought seize them out of their hand. And um, we are getting thought seize as a prosperity post, as a, what do we call it? The breaking news bonus sheet. But it's also, it's already in Timeless, in case you didn't know. You probably know. Um, but yeah, when I, I was looking at the Fiery Temper, why run that when you can run four of Lightning Bolt? We got four of Underworldly Gaze. Again, four of Glimpse the Unthinkable. I got a little bit of a theme going. I promise the next deck won't have Glimpse the Unthinkable. But the idea here, if you don't understand how the dredge works, you mill over your Phoenix, your Bloodgast, your Prize Amalgam. If you want, you can discard them with one with nothing. If you want, you can even um, Thought Seize yourself <laughs> and discard them. Um, we have one of Wonder, which we also want in our graveyard. By the time we're empty handed, uh, we're going to use Gamble. When we just got the only thing in hand is Gamble, it's going to be automatic to the graveyard. So it's a tutor to the graveyard uh, once we're down on cards. And shouldn't be too hard to get low on cards because we're pretty um, pretty low mana value here. And uh, we've got stuff that works in our graveyard, Otherworldly Gaze, Faithless Looting. We can replay, hopefully refill our hand, stuff like Treasure Cruise and things like that as well. But really, you only need a certain amount of prized amalgams Blood Gas, Arclight Phoenix to hit the graveyard. Once one of them comes out of the graveyard, the prized amalgams are going to come out of the graveyard. Uh, whenever a creature enters the graveyard, if it entered from your graveyard, <laughs> whenever it enters the battlefield, if it entered from your graveyard, return prized amalgam from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped at the beginning of the next end step. So Blood Gas is another one. People sometimes use their removal on it, and then you just drop a land or a fetch land uh, that you haven't cracked, and you get it back, and it comes back, and then Hitting the Arclight Phoenix, the three uh, spells should be fairly easy because we've got a lot of cheap spells. Surgical Extraction itself can be free. We can just pay two life to cast it. Otherworldly Gaze, Lightning Bolt, Otherworldly Gaze, of course, can be two casts in a turn, depending on how much mana we've got. Same with Faithless Looting. So it really just becomes a uh, Arclight Phoenix meets Dredge deck. And uh, I think it should be fun. I'm going to play around with it. Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> and having not tested it, I'm not sure it's the best build. We do have one of Mystic Sanctuary, too, to go put one of these things back on top of our library with one of our fetch lands that fetches, uh, I guess, Bloodstained Mire doesn't fetch uh, islands, but Polluted Delta does. Anyways, that is Grixis Dredge. And now for the main event, Mono Blue Control. All right, I'm hyped for Mana Drain. I hope you are too. This is the Mana Drain deck. Um, the thing about Mana Drain, all right, counter target spell at the beginning of your next main phase, add an amount of colorless equal to that spell's mana value. People are predicting 
<laughs> this is going to get restricted to a one of. I mean, already, why would you run this instead of counterspell, pretty much? Um, what we're going to try to do is mana drain a spell and then land a one ring. If we mana drain a big enough spell, we do have a cheeky one of Ugin the Spirit Dragon to deal with. But really, we're just a straightforward control deck. We're trying to not let people cast spells. Uh, we're going to have a Fading Hope, one of, to bounce the Orcish Bowmasters that slip through. Um, but mostly, and we're going to be able to, you know, but you know, we can hit those with the Tishana's Tidebinder and stuff. Mostly, it's counter spells. And what's fun is there's two different spree counter spells in Outlaws at Thunder Junction that I'm going to be playing around with in this deck. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the common one. Phantom Interference. Uh, for one blue and one other counter target spell, unless it's controller pays two. It's make disappear, essentially, uh, without the extra casualty mode. That should be pretty good. Once we get up to five mana, we can not only counter their spell, we can make a 2-2 two -two white spirit creature token with flying. Uh, and I guess at instant speed, if we wanted, we could pay four mana to make a 2-2 two -two spirit creature token with flying. Might be relevant. Certainly you do see, like, stuff with the... Uh, shark typhoon and things that uh, people will create a little flyer uh, in instant speed uh, we've also got three steps ahead this is the rare sp uh, spree counter spell here um, so for the cost of a cancel you've got your counter spell baseline so three mana counter spell uh, obviously not as good as our four of counter spells or mana drains but if opponent has not has stuck out the game long enough for us to have three mana then uh we can counter with three steps ahead. The nice thing is we also have a draw two cards, discard a card mode. So counter target spell and do a little looting and get come up a card ahead is pretty nice. There's also uh, an ability to add three mana, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control. So I wasn't going to play any creatures, but I thought, okay, we do have Orcish Bowmaster running around. Tishana's Tidebinder is nice. We can counter an activated trigger ability, counter the other opponent's one ring or the fetch lands or whatever with the tide binder. And then we have a little clone target for three steps ahead. Um, spell pierces, of course, just so we can't get caught off guard with the show and tell and some mystical disputes and some pact negations. We're really, really <laughs> ready for show and tell. This deck probably does lose to aggro, but you know what? If, you're here to play the mana drain, right? So if you can get your board established before they do or get your, you know, lands, get those land drops and then just start controlling the game with the counter spells, uh, then a mana drain is going to be completely demoralizing. And of course, one ring is a great thing to drop after the mana drain, get back in the game. You can't take damage the next turn. You're going to be drawing a bunch of cards with it throughout the rest of the game and uh, hopefully just close it out with, you know, Treasure Cruise, Lorien Revealed. Lorien Revealed, of course, has Island Cycling, which we can use to go get Mystic Sanctuary, which we can use to go put Mana Drain back on top of the library and do it all again. That is the third and final deck that I have to show you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave your comments about the decks in the um, description. Of course, we're still brewing until it's day one, so um, any ideas or things you have, uh, and uh, hit that subscribe and Check out the channel uh, when, when OTJ comes out because we're going to be playing some of these decks then. That's all I got to say. I hope you have a really, really nice day, partner. And I'll catch you. Oh, uh, check out some other videos while we wait for OTJ. I think you'll enjoy. Adios.